Okay, so I need to announce that uh, the gentleman in the back is, is going to be taking the meeting, so you're all going to be taken. Uh, apparently, this is legal. This is Mr. Kuzman, who is some of the order. Um, so, just so everybody knows. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, public comments. Uh, if we're having public comments relating to the um, planning issue, then probably you want to go ahead and uh, wait at that point in time. Uh, there was one uh, request for presentation on um, uh, the uh, uh, corporations as people. Would you please fill your deck? Thank you. Uh, you have two minutes. Okay, so good evening, everybody. My name is Ann Porter. I am a member of the Los Angeles Area Leadership Team for Move to Amend, which is a national coalition working for a constitutional amendment which establishes that corporations are not people, money is not speech, and we should be able to regulate campaign contributions. And I have come tonight to tell you about a video that our local group created to educate our communities about this issue and about our organization to raise awareness and, um, and let people know about it. You can watch it on YouTube. We've kept it short. It's seven and a half minutes. The title is A Question of Personhood, and we have worked to make it both entertaining and informative. We hope you enjoy watching it and find it worthy of sharing with people you know. And I'd like to pass these out. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, um, anybody else have any general um, uh, uh, public comments or possibly not related to the, the mystery? <coughs> oh, okay. Uh, you go ahead and feel free to go first, and then uh, because we're missing our, uh, uh, one of our members this evening, um, I'll just ask you to put your name down on the sheet. Oh, okay, no problem. Um, hi, everybody. My name is William Kuzman. I'm a Valley resident for somewhat over 50 years and a local realtor for 33 years. I work over at the Mel Wilson office just down the street here at the corner of Wilbur and Nordoff. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is I haven't been here for a while, so I just wanted to say hi to everybody again. I was here last year about an issue at the uh, Wilkinson Senior Center on the second Thursday of every month. The, the big band, the big band? Yeah, the big band thing. Okay. We still have a parking problem. We okay. still have people parking on the corner of the street. It's still a hazard. We have a lot of people with walkers and wheelchairs. Well, not wheelchairs, but some in wheelchairs that do dance. Um, so it's still an issue. Uh, nothing's been done about it, but it is a critical uh, period. There is an area that um, they can open up to, to parking there if the city you know, kind of gets on the ball with it. But maybe if um, you know, planning and land use committee or somebody like that could take a look at it. Yeah. And maybe so which part could they open up if, uh, to help expedite? Well, at the very back of the, the parking lot, there's a gated fence. There's also a fenced off area for uh, Wilkinson. Oh, where the, where the vans and stuff are? Yeah. Right. Okay. And right next to that, there's a gate. And on the other side of the gate is where the park area is. Okay. And then there's a big dirt kind of area there that could be used for overflow parking. Okay. Just something that, that was deep in the community. That do you have the Do you have like even ballpark uh, numbers for like the attendance at that at that meeting? So you uh, well, see, it's a combination of two things. You have the dance that occurs every Thursday afternoon, okay. and it's only a problem on the second Thursday of the month when it's also food bank day, um, and you have an influx of people from all over the place all day long, and it becomes okay. very very hectic, and 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 it's. It wouldn't be so bad, but it's the senior center. A lot of seniors can't get out of the way yeah. as quick as a six-year-old. So. No, that's a good point. I remember what you said before. Okay. Um, we'll be glad but to that's it. Up with Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, I, uh, I will put my comments uh, for now. Um, and 
save them for uh, February. But I want to just uh, welcome everybody back. Thank you uh, for uh, serving. And um, again, a number of people have heard this analogy, but I'm, I'm still having a hard time remembering what I'm supposed to be doing because it's because uh, with the holiday break in between. So it's uh, this and work, school work, and some other things I'm still trying to get back in the groove on. <coughs> so thank you for your patience on that. So we're going to have to skip the budget uh, uh, formal um, approval because um, uh, Margaret's husband's in Kaiser. Uh, and I guess this is a last minute thing. I was asked to go get the cookies at, you know, uh, 45 minutes ago. So uh, we're going to have to defer that till, uh, till February. But, I, but if she was here, she basically would say that at this point in time, the only, uh, I know that's correct, the only information, the only thing that, that's uh, costed out uh, for the December, January period that we're in so far are the standard things that we uh, have, which is the uh, mailing address um, at the uh, chamber, our storage units, and uh, the uh, website costs. So what we'll be doing those day is we can still mo move on motions for So uh, with that, we'll go on to um, new business. And uh, uh, are you sure? Um, yeah, yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay. So I'm very happy <laughs> to uh, uh, present the first group. Let me just say some nice things. The L.A. Moss people, uh, on the agenda is right, I should have the, uh, the accent mark, uh, are a uh, two, well, two very uh, outstanding people and more behind them, who are um, working with the city on this uh, first project that they're going to be doing for us in uh, Northridge, basically in the Northridge Village area on the CETA, uh, part of the Great Streets. So um, I will uh, invite Helen uh, up to, and uh, actually we've got uh, doing the other presentations. If you guys want to go ahead and just introduce yourselves and then just let folks know what, uh, you know, what this is uh, all going to be about, and, uh, your, your technical system there. But so go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, everyone, for having us. Uh, my name is Laura Murr, and this is my colleague Stacy Wrigley. We are with LA Moss, uh, a nonprofit community design organization, and we are here today to share with you a project that we are working on in partnership with the city. The city's, uh, the mayor's office has a project called the Great Streets Initiative, which many of you have or may not have heard about. Um, it was the mayor's first executive program, and the goal of the Great Streets program uh, was to select 15 streets uh, throughout the city of Los Angeles, one in each council district, um, with the goal of uh, activating the public space, making sure it's multimodal, help uh, have boost economic development, and make it a place to celebrate the communities and the neighborhoods where these great streets are located. And in Northridge, your great street is on uh, Reseda Boulevard between uh, Parthenia and uh, Nora. Um, uh, so our, one of our partners is the mayor's office who is funding this project. Our other partner is, uh, we're also working in conjunction with council member Mitch Englander's office, and I know Semi and Jonathan are here today, so we are meeting them regularly to make sure that what we're doing is in line with the vision of this community and all of you who uh, uh, have worked really hard to make sure that uh, Northridge continues to be a place that you're proud of. A little bit about us. Uh, we have been around for a little over two years, and we are a nonprofit. We perform design-based experiments in the city. Uh, we use research and community engagement, and we uh, are based in Northeast Los Angeles, but we work across the city. Uh, we all are, have different disciplines, so my background is in public policy and urban planning, and Stacey has a background in architecture and design. Um, some quick projects that we've worked on to give you a sense of the projects we've done before. Uh, in the neighborhood called the Legion Valley near the Los Angeles River, we conducted a three-month intensive community engagement process to help shape the vision of that neighborhood as it changes, engaging community members on topics such as affordability and density, um, similar to what you guys have done with the North Ridge Vision Plan, which I know this neighborhood council was instrumental in being part of. Uh, we also partner a lot with other community-based organizations. This is a project we did in the Pico Union area um, in conjunction with the Koreatown Youth and Community Center. 
we uh, worked with the community members to transform an alley that frequently got tagged uh, to something that has a lot more color in conjunction with local community members and with the general sponsorship of the labor. So this is kind of a before and midway. Um, using our expertise of design and construction, uh, this is an example of a project we did to support an art walk in the neighborhood that our office is located in. We created these numbers, they're six feet tall. Um, they're designed and fabricated uh, in conjunction with an artist, and we use that as a way to identify signage um, in a neighborhood where often you can't really see an address. So that was our solution to help create a holistic identity for a art walk. Uh, Frogtown is in northeast Los Angeles. It's near Dodger Stadium. Streets. Uh, the streets of uh, Frogtown are the five freeway to the west, the LA River to the east, the two freeway to the north, and the one ten to the south. So about yeah, yeah. Elysian Valley, unofficially known as Frogtown. Um, this is an example of a project that we partnered with the Los Angeles River Revitalization Corporation. Um, it's called. <coughs> Roving Real Vistas, and what we did was we, in a one month period of time, built 46 pieces that made up a mobile pop-up parklet. So every piece is four by four, and here are just a few of the pieces that included planter boxes, back there's a seesaw, um, there's seating, exercise equipment, um, and that's one of our recent projects where we designed and fabricated. Um, the project where we worked uh, in conjunction with another community and with the city uh, is a project in Watts, in the Watts community in South LA, along Wilmington Avenue near the Watts Towers, uh, we partnered with 10 small businesses creating a collective business identity and uh, made sure to also highlight the individual nature of each of the businesses. So um, each business got a new coat of paint, uh, custom designed um, hand signed names to highlight the services and products they provided, as well as an icon that we cut and fabricated. Um, and if you guys haven't been down there, uh, if next time you go to the Watts Tower, make sure to swing down uh, when we can have you. So yeah, and this is just two of the 10 businesses that we transformed. So that of course leads us to then the project here, the Cedar Boulevard. So um, we really uh, took a look at the North Ridge Vision Plan and um, wanted to highlight the things that we thought were really you know, great about the Vision Plan and that is supporting small businesses, enhancing pedestrian experience, and um, the participatory planning process. So this is the area that we're going to be working in. It's, um, we're going to be uh, between Gresham Street and the crosswalk that is just south of Mordoff. Um, phase one, we've chosen the block of Joyce's Coffee, that Joyce's Coffee Shop sits on. Um, and we'll be working with Enjoy Games, Orphan CDs, and Joyce's Coffee Shop to program some street furniture the sidewalk. So one of the really great things about the stretch and why we chose it is because it has some really great assets. One being the wide sidewalks, these great awnings. There's a lot of room for programming and a lot of opportunity for both the small businesses to come out and the pedestrians to really um, take up this public space. Uh, there's also a lot of really great small businesses. So. That we want to highlight these businesses, we want to make it known that these are active small businesses and we want to get people in, in there. And great community partners, everyone, you all, uh, Northridge Sparkles, Don Larson, um, they're going to be our maintenance, maintenance partner for this, so they're hugely integral in this and um, everyone that is, this whole community that's been so active. Um, so our proposal is that we will be, um, the goals are to enhance the identity of this historic stretch, to create more um, a more pedestrian friendly sidewalk, and to highlight the adjacent small businesses. So we'll be doing this through three different components, and those are um, sidewalk patterning. And just to note, these are just example images, we, we um, will be sh showing you everyone our designs next Tuesday. but. Um, this is just to give you a sense of things that we've been looking at and how, um, what we mean when we say sidewalk patterning. So uh, that would be the first component, and it's really um, a way to create a big impact and um, create an identity for the corridor. Uh, the second would be sidewalk furniture. So again, to program space for both 
the businesses to really come out of their store and also for pedestrians to find public space on the sidewalk. And under awning art. Um, so this is really how we're going to give the businesses an opportunity to really showcase themselves um, through uh, art that we're going to be putting on under these great uh, wide awnings. Um, our timeline for this is fairly short. We, um, we're splitting into phase one and phase two. Phase one is really seen as a pilot um, and, and having uh, the first collection of pilots be on one stretch is, is our way of seeing does this work and how will the community respond. Um, so we invite you to come to our first community workshop next Tuesday where we'll show, provide a couple of options that uh, we will be moving forward with that will be completed by March. And then at that time, when we're completed with the first phase, we will also have proposals for the rest of the stretch, uh, that two block area, that will include about 10 more businesses and hopefully a couple of businesses on um, both sides of the street between the two streets. All wrapping up in May or June. So hopefully by June, that whole stretch will be kind of transformed into something really great. Um, and so we want to invite you to learn more about <coughs> our partners as well as what we're thinking about doing and we want your feedback. Um, so our first workshop will be next Tuesday um, at Joyce's Coffee Shop. It's an open house format, so drop by from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the flyer is posted on the Neighborhood Council website and we actually have a few uh, for anyone who's interested. And we also want to take some questions if anyone has any. Uh, Larry, it was a mistake, um, sorry. Have you considered adding some black racks? Uh, that, that is a part okay. of the street Thanks, furniture, buddy. so um, yeah, absolutely. Great. We're looking at ways to really creatively program this so that it's it's more than a bike rack, right? It, it really serves multiple functions. And I want to make a comment because it sounds smiling. That came from Denali, not from Sal. I beat him to it. I beat him to it, right? So, um, Anybody else have any board questions on this? Um, audience, any questions you might have on this? What's um, the address? Oh, okay, we'll go back here. You, you had uh, the address of Joyce's Coffee Shop is 8826 Rosita Boulevard. It's just south of uh, Rain uh, on the east side of the street. Joyce's is a longtime institution. There has been a Joyce for many, many years. But um, it's, it's our local uh, dive. You know, Reese's Spoon, wonderful place. <laughs> also, a very, very unique in that they only take cash. So it's a, and, a, and they're in the tradition of a, 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 a breakfast and lunch place that closed by three o'clock. So it's yeah. a terrific picture that we are opening for, uh, for this evening for this terrific uh, mm -hmm. presentation and uh, light refreshments. And you don't have first. to bring cash because the, the freshness will be. Right. So we really <laughs> encourage you to come by and, and see the crowd. saying that basically these are ephemeral projects, correct? Yes, absolutely. So people should understand that, that they, they may be very uh, out there, and I think some of them will be, but to understand that they're to engage the public, to start the conversation, and they're, temp they're temporary by nature. Yes, right? and it's really about uh, placemaking and right. making 
you know, this like a, a space that people want to come and hang out in and really bring, you know, CSUN students down and, and really activate the space. So, that's a good question. Is there another question? Oh, yes, I read. So, you're talking about the Nordoff question? Um, we'll be only doing Gresham to uh, just a little bit past Smith Hobby. There's a crosswalk there, so that's where um, that's kind of right before the 99 cent center. <coughs> you start to get parking lot to sidewalk. I think it's fabulous idea. Country meeting to our community. Um, is there anything in the works to go further? Well, great streets is where you get right. It is, yeah. it, it is a prototype, and I, I, I was listening really intently, but I, I'm not sure I caught that, because in the documentation it said that you're starting with these, but uh, you would be doing as many as 10 by June? Yes, so okay. we, we're, we'll be um, doing 10 businesses, but it will still only be in that small stretch, um, and that's really for, I would say, budget reasons, right. and this is where we, you know, we put it out there, we show it off, Look how successful it is. Let's do now more, let's get yeah. more funding right. and expand it. Right. So absolutely. And you don't want to diffuse. Right. Absolutely. And you don't want to make it diffuse. So I mean, if you did one here and one over there, it doesn't it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, we wanted so. to make a large impact. Right. This. Wow, really great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 But but by nature, the, this sort of project, I think that's why I said that. I want to emphasize that both for people's concerns and for people's positives, is that it's really to spark the conversation. You know, this is not a final product. You know, so, but it hopefully will lead to the, that kind of discussion to do some things in more of the hardscape, you know, more permanent kind of things. Right. Terrific, anything else? You mentioned something about the budget, how much is the budget for those kind of businesses? Our budget for all our materials and installation is $15,000. It's very, it's very modest. This is why it's really like it's, it's like an art project. Really. It's, it's uh, very ephemeral. But it, but what I love about it and I love the whole concept is that there, you can make so much in, uh, impact, you know, with this. And it's, you look at your examples of the numbers for the, like the art block and stuff. These are, you know, they, they tie a process of you know a flow and uh, you know traffic to, together. So we're really, I can't say how excited we are about this. It's very exciting. Well, we are very excited. Well, I think that's really what we're kind of hoping to study once we, we do this, right? To see what the impact is. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Looks great. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we apologize we won't be able to stay for the rest of the meeting, but we're going to leave our cards on.
you know, we'll give you a solid 10 minutes for sure without anybody bothering you, and then we'll see how we're going to do that. So she will ask questions as a, as a uh, citizen oh, if she wants to. All right. Yeah. I can. I talked to the city attorney. You did? Mm -hmm. Right yeah. now, the church exists on this parcel right here. Pardon me? Can, I'm sorry. Can you stand so no, that... I want to present it to the board. Oh, you're just presenting it well, to it, the Well, tell you what, Will. Turn it a little bit. I think we can all we can all hear. We we've, we've actually we've seen this before. So go ahead. And turn, uh, we're listening and we're paying attention. But turn it a little bit more to yeah, that. We'll do it. Yes, if anybody has a concern, you. they can come come around and stand there. Anyway, the church sits right here on Rosco Boulevard, which is here at the bottom of the page. And that includes eleven classrooms, which are used currently for Sunday school and for a preschool program of 45 children. There's a fellowship hall, and we have parking for 205 vehicles. This is an approved by uh, previous condition meetings. Subsequent to this approval, the church acquired this parcel right here, went back to the city, and acquired another condition of use to allow a 58 unit senior citizen independent housing complex. There's uh, 58 units in here and they're all one bedroom units. So it's not two schools or two. It's all one bedroom units right here. There's a driveway here that accesses this parcel right here. And being that it's only one bedroom units, there is a, a, a request for two bedroom units because some people do not have to sleep together or maybe it's one of sister or two sisters or whatever. So they want separate rooms. So we acquired, the church acquired this parcel over here and this parcel over here. This parcel is part of phase one, which will be a 53 unit uh, senior citizen complex. It will have, um, it's 53, it'll have 28 two bedrooms, and, uh, 28 one bedrooms, and 28 two bedrooms. 25, 25 um, um, There's all parking in the back. The parking is in the back. It's in its okay, okay so the, the I'm going to hold you guys to that. I'm going to do this presentation because I, I don't want to be distracted from making the points. The, I may ask informational things to make sure that we've all understood, but we'll hold questions until it's done. This is part of phase one. Phase one is comprised of two aspects of the request. One is to build this building, and two is to allow uh, K through five right. in, the, in the 11 classrooms. There will be no construction or modification. These classrooms are already exist and they're used now for Sunday school. So we are just going to do that. And over here is a play area for the students and the families. This is phase one. These two uh, components are phase one. Phase two consists of this building here, which is a smaller building, it's 24 units, and it will have um, 21 bedrooms and four two-bedroom units. Each of these parcels are parked according to code, and as is the church, the church has excess, excess parking. Because uh, there's 173 parking spaces required by code, and there's two or five existing. Right now, along this, this, this seven and a half acre parcel, which has close to 500 foot of frontage, or 750 foot of frontage along has five projects. These two projects, if they're approved, will reduce the number of projects. So one driveway would serve. The two driveways would serve the church, the school, and this building here. There's 
there's been a big demand over the years for the topic of people coming out of here. They have housing. They have left there. Most of our them have left without anything. And they come to the tri local churches because they're comfortable with, with their own people. A lot of them don't speak English. And these are all seniors, 62 and older. So they're not intrusive. Most of them, a lot of them don't drive. So there's no issue with parking. They are not loud and boisterous. They don't have um, any really adverse impact on the community. Everything is oriented toward the boulevard and not toward the building. As you notice, the back of each building is parking to cause a buffer between the actual unit and residential property design. Uh, let, let's, let me just uh, spring the mission for a minute. I want, I want to separate the school issue from the uh, senior. So um, you, uh, the, the school uh, uh, request does not really um, involve new construction as, as such, because your, your position is that you have an existing building that's being used, square footage is being used in a certain way. And it's going to be used for classrooms for the added um, grade range that was requesting. So, but uh, there'll be some minimum, minimal modification in, inside of the buildings for that, or, or are you sent, is your position of that? So the, 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 it's a classroom format already, okay. Classrooms, okay. So there's not going to be any construction. Okay, so how many students, how many, uh, how many students would that be? Currently we have 45 children approved. Right. We have uh, a request for 100 which would include both preschool and K preschool. Okay, so in that capacity, we, you know, we, uh, the, the, you made the point of the cop, the uh, uh, older folks not having, sh older folks not having um, cars or whatever, and probably not having water parties at night. Uh, so there's some aspect of that that it's real, you're minimizing their effect. But you will have more traffic um, as a result of having the school yes. because you will have people coming and going with their students. Uh, traffic study. It's still in process right. at City Hall. The Department of Transportation has issued a, memor a memorandum of understanding, which uh, has identified four intersections that could be impacted. <coughs> they were evaluated in one, one intersection, the intersection of Roscoe and Balboa. Right, so Bal I've got it here. Balboa, Roscoe, Louise, Roscoe, White Oak, uh, Roscoe and Lindley Roscoe. Right. And the Balboa Roscoe is the only one of the four that um, was, impact. was impacted. Okay. And um, there's several ways in which we can mitigate that impact. Okay. One is to uh, reduce the enrollment from 180 to a lower number, which is somewhere about 165. We don't know if that's going to work. We can also adjust the hours so we can stagger the classes so the kids don't, the intersections aren't impacted. <coughs> or the city has a, a highway fund which we can contribute to that fund. And for the highway improvement fund, whatever that amount is, and that's the, um, has to still be negotiated with the deal. We don't know how that's going to come out. We know that we're going to have to do something to mitigate that issue. Right. Okay. I'm glad that you're recognizing that. Um, I'm going to let the other folks uh, ask questions in a minute. And I can't think if you're still talking with the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I think one clear, uh, crucial point that I know people uh, have asked about and I just want you to make clear in your presentation is mm -hmm. the heights of those buildings. Um, and um, also, I know you're making a case that you don't, you're doing one now. One later, so the now would be, you know, now that this is proof. The later is what? How much later? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what, what are the actual heights on your this? This is a three story building, and these two will also be three story building. Okay, and there's no other, there, I understand you, you want to have a certain amount of um, uh, rooms for folks, and I, I understand the case you made and stuff like that, but there's no, uh, as far as you're concerned, there's no way you can use that. Property uh, and make that those, those two-story two buildings. 
But you will be forced on this other part to put the parking. We will be forced to put the parking in there, but again, these are seniors and, and they don't do yeah. all the So, okay, good. Um, I'm going to let the board ask questions in just a minute. I don't want to cut you short. Is there any more specific comments you want to make on it? I think we get more value from responding more. to questions. Okay, yes, so. go ahead, Irene. Um, quick question, because I haven't seen the mask. I, I can't see them in the show. Um, these are independent. So they are kitchens, is that right? So there are no dwelling units under the code. Yeah. Okay. There's no Has, do you have a mock-up that shows architectural design and landscape? It's going to follow the same. Uh, but you don't have a I don't have a Have you complied with the city's residential design guidelines for preparing yeah. architectural plans? Yeah. That, yeah, that's been done. Right now, we're in the planning department, and uh, if they, they they have the authority to change the building if they want, so final plans have not been determined. It's hard to visualize yeah. what the design is without a rendering. I don't have my notes. I'm sorry, I just don't have them. So the board might consider. Um, you're you're saying that it's um, similar to the existing So the board's in, 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 invited. I think. The folks who have any problem with that, go, you know, to, to go by and look at it. Um, also, I wouldn't be bad to look at the relationship between the back uh, and, you know, in the back and see what that's like. Um, so, sure. sure. okay, Dagmar. Yeah. Are you going to meet with the neighbors around the church? Are you going to have any meeting, any informant about the, the project? We the will. With this? We're waiting for the environmental aspect of the project to be concluded, and that means. Well, they do now. See, that's what. See, this is uh, the, the, my, our concerns was that the city sometimes moves uh, very slowly, but other times moves very quickly. So that you might have those finished, and the folks might get the 500 feet notification, and uh, uh, you know, 10 days we'll, to go we'll to. We'll uh, get. We'll get the. Uh, right. We'll get a letter out to the adjacent property. Right. Right. Well, a lot we'll of them. A lot of them. Sure. We we have shared. Right. You know, right. So we have shared that information, just information with, with no no position, with uh, with, the, with the neighbors. So we want people to be aware of it. So yeah, I have a question. Um, in some schools that are fronting uh, big streets like Balboa, there's a high school. There's kind of like an eye offset island where people can drive in and drop off. I'm assuming most of them are driving in and dropping off their kids. How is that um, dropping off? In your vision of uh, Roscoe, are they going to park in the, the church parking lot? And what they do? Do the school will totally function on this parking lot. There's two driveways to drive. One is the designated for men and one is the designated for us. The vehicle to drive in, drop the kids off, and drive out over here. So there's a slow traffic. And there's plenty of staffing. Traffic light that 
here to uh, Lily is maybe 300 feet, 400 feet. You need to I mean, it's really, yeah. <coughs> it's about three, four hundred feet. It's, it's roughly. Well, we can go over here. Okay. Um, okay. Well, maybe we'll have a field trip. Anybody wants to go, we'll just have a field trip. Well, you're more than welcome. We'll give you a tour of the campus. That's great. We want to do that. Okay. So let me ask that question specifically, okay, because I'm, I'm at a little bit of a advantage on, on that and we uh, because of the recusal we lost our you know major force here behind our planning and land use. Um, so a zoning uh, what if any zoning in, in this is everything by right or anything here that's a zoning change? No no zoning no, no. so this the is all by right. Is already zoning right now. Okay. And it's gonna remain And the thing with the parking, the tandem is that they're just bump, they're they're blocking each other, right? Which is why. Yeah, but that's why they're used by. The, by the curb I understand. Team. And that the normal normal curb circumstances, you have somebody there. One last point. Yeah. This this is the parking for the church. Right. The church and the school are complementary. When the church is at the, the service, the school is not. And when the school is at the church, the church is not. Where is for school events? Where would the parking be? There's a school event, there's a graduation, or whatever. The public is facing the public at home. And the parking would be right here. No parking on the street. I'm sorry, Dad. Okay, all right, so, um, all righty, I want to, uh, any more comments from the, the board on this question? Uh, well, we're going to go to that in a minute. So um, here's how I would like to do this. Um, I really would like to have you guys, if you know this, we're not going to come and find you in your homes, uh, but we do like to have people identify uh, uh, themselves. You're not required to. But also, so I'm going to, I'm going to take, because uh, I've only got Anne's name, I'm going to start with her. But I will, you know, point and let you uh, speak. I really encourage <coughs> folks, if you just want, want to get up and say the same thing the other person said, please don't. Okay, just, just say I agree with them. Okay, and we'll, we'll understand that. So, um, and did put her name down, you, or, or you're speaking for Anne. Yeah, if you want to, did you want to make any comments? Okay. okay, well, then that's all right. I'll, we'll make sure to put you down here. You got our email. Uh, did the sign in sheet, yeah. No, we got the sign in sheet. I asked uh, Anne about sending emails. When did you send it? Okay, but it must have been later. I've been out all day, basically. So, did you? so it's okay. It'll be on the If you send me anything, it's on the record. We'll be using that as, as uh, extra information. So, um, so we're gonna we we're really gonna do this in two, two minutes, and when you hear the beep, we just have to uh, stop. Uh, but I mean, so that way we can get everybody who wants to make a comment. So go go ahead if you'd like to. Okay, first, I have a question. Um, 
I kind of like this in a way. You can see this. Uh, this building looks like it doesn't come back as far as the existing apartment building. What is the approximate distance from here to here? About 65 feet. 65 feet? Okay, it's a little less here. Right. This is a smaller apartment. And you're acquiring all the parcels over to the, the uh, what do you call it, the liquor store the tool no, I mean, this place. Is, this is for the Yeah, this they're, is they're staying here, right? right now. You're just getting the house. Because okay. uh, our property is here. So just so we're clear for the audience in your comment is that this is not as close to you as the that existing building is currently. Right. By a little bit. We had to set it back further okay. because it's a smaller parcel than we had. Okay, so that's really more com question than, than comment. And did you want to make any any today? I mean, I'll take the email. That's fine. Is there anything else you want to say? I didn't know. That, I thought that was just a sign that you for uh, attendance. I didn't know it was signing. Oh, you don't have to. Speak. No, no, you don't have to speak. I wouldn't. There's no requirement to. I, um, uh, if you don't want to, your email is good. Okay. Sure, or you, want, or you can do it or I can read it for you, whatever you want to do. Okay. Here's a quick summary of my concerns. I'll have more later. One, incompatible, massive intrusion on this RA neighborhood with its country character, large lots, farm animals, even existing original barn, now a city monument. Two, ignores needs, privacy, and rights of surrounding residences visually dominating, noisy school and night activities, bright lights shining into neighboring yards, even trespass into neighbor's yards to cut down a large eucalyptus tree instead of merely trimming overhanging leaves. Additional apartment buildings will only increase this intrusion. Three, fail to adhere to requirements of March 8, 2002 permit. A, failure to plant shade trees on church and apartment grounds to replace the more than 100 large shade and specimen trees they have removed, including California live oaks. B, failure to, lose, to use clinging vines to cover the broad, expansive, three-story bare walls with windows and balconies looming over adjacent properties. C, failure to mitigate the impacts to a level of significance and ensure compatibility with the surroundings. And those were, so those were quotes from the permit. Um, and as for the, uh, the heavily landscaped at the back, it's not heavily landscaped there. Um, uh, were existing eucalyptus trees there, which have been severely trimmed. And there were um, uh, bay trees planted along the uh, east wall of the church property, but they've been trimmed down to the level of the wall, which turns them into shrubs. So there is no screening. Screening would be feasible. Okay, so that's terrific. That's very good uh, information, um, you know, for us and that. Uh, Got your emails. Everyone's heard this now. We'll, we'll add this to uh, to our uh, pile. Thank you very much for that. I, I have a question about what you just read when you said failure to replace trees that were removed. Was that an order uh, that was to plant the, trees or to replace the trees from the city that was not complied with? Yeah, that's, uh, I, mean, you have a chance to I have history on that. So, so all right, uh, citizen, <laughs> citizen uh, popping. At the, at the original hearing, they had beautiful specimen tree. It was a four acre property that was developed as a ranch. Absolutely lovely thing. They promised us they would not cut down the specimen trees. You know what they did? Christmas Eve morning, they cut down all of the specimen trees. Came in, I, I thought I could trust a church. Came in and cut down all of the trees. So then they went back to the city, ordered them to replant, and they never did it. They just put in these little tiny things. So okay. that's right. the history. So, 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 okay, so these, that, that, the, those, uh, okay, so we're just taking everything as input right now. I'm not, the, the church people have every, will have every opportunity to challenge the you know, comments that people are making. So, okay, just one, one quickly, one. yeah. And she just alluded to it really funny. You know, there were some pretty big little streams back here which used to help shade our yard. Well, they just trimmed them severely a month or two ago. And we just had a devastating freeze the first week of this month. Now, a neighbor of ours had a similar thing done a long time ago. The trees died. So if the eucalyptus die, there will be bright sun shining down on a play area. By the way, the kids, or your kids, you know. 
and it's crazy. Okay. They don't like so, shade trees. Obviously. So, so I reckon. So what? We're, so what we're taking? We're taking and put an issue about possibly uh, good faith issues about about trees and the idea of, of coverage uh, and shielding property. So we under, we'll understand that that comment and we'll, we'll take it and <coughs> encourage uh, counter um, ex, you know, comments about it. Um, so I want to. Okay. So what we'll do now is I know there's a lot of people here. Um, if you want to put your hand up, I'll point, point at you. If you want to make additional comments, I think there were some pretty thorough ones there. If you simply want to be here on record as opposing, you know, generally generally opposing, because like, obviously we don't have every aspect of this, and we don't have the, the you know the, the 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 appearance of it or whatever, I will ask for a, a show of hands for that. We'll do that as well. Uh, does anybody uh, that's sitting here want to make some more comments? Hold yours, and I'll let you do it. Any new to to the board? Well, let, let me have them. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if anybody's going to put their. They're kind of shy back here. Okay. Go up there if you would. If you just stand up so we can hear you a bit. Yes, we live on Roscoe Boulevard. Every Sunday we have a problem with the parking. Uh, you're saying you have enough parking facility right now? It doesn't seem like it. We're the one that gets stuck with the trash. My neighbor and I, and all around our area. So it's either noise, trash, cars all over, our guests can't even park in front of our house because of the church. Okay, and this is just Sunday. Can you imagine when the school is there, um, special occasions, holidays with the church, and the kids from school, and every, all the relatives from the senior going to see their loved ones? Now, it's just, good for their pocket, but it's bad for our environment around. Thank you. Yeah. All right, good, 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 good comments. Yes, please stand up. Yes, you know, I lived on Roscoe across the street from the church before the church was built. And I remember we were promised that um, you're gonna have enough parking to not park in front of our houses. Well, that didn't happen. Um, but it's okay that they park there. The thing is, sometimes you have late masses. You have like midnight mass, and when they leave, they're they're very um, disrespectful to the neighborhood. They're very loud. They bang doors. Um, they scream. They they stand in the corner, which I live in the corner, and they talk really loud. Um, they're very disruptive. Um, not only that, but you have real estate agents and other business people that go to the church and they put their flyers on the cars. So I have to go on the street and pick up all the flyers from the cars because I want my neighbors to throw them in the street. And then it, it creates a lot, of, a lot of mess. And not only that, when they leave the church, they make an illegal U-turn. I live in Encino or Roscoe. They make an illegal U-turn right after they exit the church before Roscoe or right at Roscoe. It's an illegal U-turn, and they do it all the time. And it's, it's a bit, big concern, traffic one. Right. Okay, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More, more uh, yes, uh, in the Susan Scheid, um, and I'm concerned about the effect of the uh, access once the school is in. I'm a retired teacher. I know what mm -hmm. it's like. Mm -hmm. And parents are crazy. <laughs> they really do. Bring your kids and picking them up. Yeah. Okay. I'm also just going to say right now, um, I re all the folks who got up this really good input, I would really Please, before you uh, leave, give us your, your contact information, okay, so we, so we have it, all right? Anybody anybody else back there wants to make some comments? I'll let you, as soon as I see more hands now, I'll let you. Anybody else back there? I'm going to let them all speak then. Okay, yes. Citizen Coffee. Um, we've had, a, I, my husband and I own a, a house in the neighborhood, we had a really bad history with them. They promised they won, they wouldn't cut down these trees. They promised, and it's in a city approval letter that they'd never asked for an expansion. They, this is the second time that they've come back and asking for expansion. I think the senior units are just too large for the neighborhood. This is low residential too. Uh, it's not zoned for apartments. I understand that they want senior housing, but the scale is out of scale with the neighborhood. There's also no over concentration. There's an existing building there now that they use in low residential too. It's, it's RA, low residential too. It's not C1, C2. Across the street at the corner of uh, Roscoe and Louise is a four-story uh, uh, senior unit. So this is going to create four buildings in one neighborhood that's in a severe over, over concentration of a use in an RA zone. 
parking now, as the neighbors have mentioned, is a problem. They are, the people are so egregious on Sunday morning, they pull, pull into my private driveway and park mm -hmm. to go to church. Mm -hmm. Come on. So the parking problem is going to be acerbated by this because they don't, the two units, they, they're claiming there probably won't be as many people driving, but there is going to be a huge influx of, of a parking problem that is already uh, a problem as everybody has noted at this time. The project is too big, <coughs> it does not fit in with the neighborhood, and I completely object to it. Okay, thank, thank you. We agree. Oh, yes, sure, just second, but let me hear what you're <laughs> Sure, okay. Um, <coughs> Diane would like just for the minutes to know um, how many uh, of you are here uh, specifically as neighbors, you know, the folks that make the comments and the others. So if you just put your hands up. If you come for this item and you're and you're a neighbor in the neighborhood, uh, you need to have a stand. Stand. Why don't you stand? Because it's easier for us to count you. supposed to be residential agricultural right? Right. now we have a lovely Hispanic family that lives in this area and then there's some other people we don't know so well they're a little sloppy in this area but they've got chickens they've got goats they've got farm animals they got they train horses it's the Laura family Eric and what is it, Erica and Giovanni I don't know if anybody knows and we like them there because I have chickens Okay. We, we bought this property decades ago to live the residential agricultural life. I mean, your issues are, I see what you're saying too, but what does RA mean? Okay. If, if we can just, why don't we just change it to all apartments, okay. you know? Right. I mean, it's very upsetting. I don't want to see that family leave. It's just a plea. Okay. I, I can't do anything so, about it. I, I have terrible regrets. I would hate to see those people move. Okay. Thank you. No, no, we appreciate that. Right. So, um, so, uh, for, so far as uh, comments from anybody except this nice gentleman who's very patient, uh, you go right ahead and, and make a couple more comments, and we'll probably want to wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. As far as the trees back